Hello and welcome to the September 2020 edition of what it's like to live with a classic mini. In this series, I'll be going through what I've done and what I've spent to keep my Mini running and on the road. I'll be going through the purchases of tools and parts and any services I've procured, as well as consumables and delivery costs. I'll also be going through the jobs I've done, such as any specific cleaning, installation of parts, fixing any broken items, and probably breaking items myself. Let's go. Unfortunately, I spent a large part of this month trying to resolve a running issue and a lumpy idle. I've been studying and reading this forum post about how to investigate issues with poor running SPI minis. This forum post is a must read if you have an SPI or MPI as it clearly sets out the cause of running issues. It includes the most common faults such as vacuum lines, breather hoses and the inertia switch and I'm about 80% of the way through all of the checks as prescribed in this forum post. To help gather more information, I've started to collect data on the running of my car via a Sykes Picofant module. So here you can see five data points taken throughout September that includes readings whilst I was learning how to use the tool. An important point to note here is to really only take readings when the engine is at 88 degrees C or normal running temperature. So looking at the data, some of the conclusions I've drawn is that the Mini is idling quite high as it should be at around 825 to 875 RPMs. The idle switch appears to be operating correctly and the map sensor also seems to be okay at about 30 kPa's. What is interesting is that the inlet air temperature sensor is currently reading about 35 degrees Celsius, which could indicate an error. I do have a new sensor on order. The lambda sensor appears to be working as it's moving from 0.2 to 0.7 volts as the car is idling. I will be continuing to take readings each month to build up a picture of how the car is performing over time. I have also produced a checklist that I've summarised from the forum post which I've been using to solve my rough idle. This has had some success as the issue does appear to be mostly resolved, albeit still present for about 20 seconds when I turn the car on. The major improvement this month has been to replace the old tarnished screen fillets with nice shiny new ones. The fillets were very easy to remove and I was sure to clean the rubber surround before trying to install the new fillets. I used this can of rubber care to help lubricate as I was installing the fillets as this was recommended to me. It also worked very very well. The fillet tool did require some modification when it first arrived to ensure that it fit snugly in the gap in the rubber moulding. This task initially sounded very daunting to me and I had heard some horror stories about cracked windscreens. I have to say though that with the tool as well as the lubricating spray it was actually much easier than I thought it would be. I was sure to go slowly and use plenty of lubrication as I helped guide the new fillets into its home. You can see that when I got going, you'd build up a nice little bit of momentum and it would actually go quite smoothly. I then finished off with the cap in the centre. The rear screen then, exactly the same as for the front screen, removal was very simple. I was sure to clean the rubber surround and apply plenty of rubber care spray. By this time I felt like I was getting the hang of it and I went pretty quickly and much quicker than the front windscreen. 
you'll notice that my hand appears to be vibrating and this I found to be the best way to gently nudge and move the fillet into its position. Occasionally the fillet tool would fall out of its surrounding, however you just needed to back up a little bit, set it back in place and then carry on. The corners were obviously a tricky part, but again, I didn't really find this too difficult and the tool and the spray helped immensely. At the end, give it a simple trim, apply the capping and job done. The end result then, you can see looks much better with the tarnished fillet gone and a nice new strip shining in the sunshine. So looking at the numbers, you can see in September I actually managed to control spending having only spent £35 or $57. This was pretty much on the rubber care for the windscreen fillet installation as well as some silicon vacuum hose that I'll be using to replace the hard vacuum hoses in the engine bay. Cumulative spend not really moved much since last month with a total spend of £2,926 or $4,740. You'll see that I spent the most money on parts followed by tools, delivery fees, consumables and services. The September 2020 parts fitted analysis shows that I purchased a silicon hose vacuum pipe however that's not yet been installed. Looking at the cumulative parts analysis, you'll see that as I spent most of the month hunting down this idle issue, I've only really been able to install the screen silver fillets. Looking at the other analysis, you'll see that I've driven 61 and a half miles or 99 kilometers. I've spent a poultry seven pounds 59 or $12.29 and fuel efficiency, a little bit disappointing at 25.8 miles per gallon. I've put this down to me leaving the car on the driveway whilst I've been hunting this idle issue. Upcoming tasks, the biggest ones, to rebuild the rear brakes and replace the braided lines. A new metric this month is to show the distance and fuel economy each time I fill the car up. You can see started off very well on the fuel economy at almost 30 miles per gallon, but then you can see the dip. Again, I've put this down to me leaving the car on the drive whilst I try to find this idle issue. Journeys mostly involved me driving to the office or to the local shops taking the car for short distances whilst I hunt down the issues. All that was left for me to do this month was to give the car a quick wash, although as you can see from the photos, it looked pretty good even when it was dirty. Till next time.